thousand dollar dirt bike find here. This is a 1998 Yamaha YZ125. As you can see, it's a little rough. Non-running. So the story on this one is that the seller, he bought it running, drove it, blew it up, rebuilt the top end, and uh, couldn't get it running after that. He said the crank was fine, the piston was brand new, everything is fine on it, and he just cannot figure it out. Everything's just kind of taken off of it because he was trying to diagnose it, so nothing's really bolted down. Everything's kind of loose. He said he checked the flywheel already, the woodruff key there, thinking it was timing, but it wasn't that. So that's kind of loose on there as well. So today, we're going to try to see if we can get a good deal on this thing and get this thing running and driving. Because you can't find a YZ125 for $1,000 anywhere on Facebook, unless it's blown up and, of course, not running. <laughs> so today is the day we get lucky and get this thing running in a couple hours is what I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's gonna be something with a carb or just like a bad spark plug or a bad like kill switch or something easy that the guy missed. But we're gonna find out today. You can see it does have the pro circuit pipe with the pro circuit silencer on there. Tires are probably 55% on front and rear. So pretty worn out does have newer radiators on there and it looks like the cylinder and head are pretty new they're not too bad v-force reeds in there so somebody put a little bit of money into it engine doesn't look cracked nothing's leaking from the cases over here still has the original carburetor on there so this one was actually advertised as in 1995, and uh, he said there's like a ton of people wanting this bike. But he knew me from the channel, saved it for me, and he said he hoped I could get it running, because he could not. So, let's get this thing off the truck and see what we can do today. I'd like to ride a bike for once and not just uh, tear it apart. <laughs> Let's get a little walk around the bike. Get a better feel for it here. Check out the VIN. You can see W is the 10th digit. So it's in fact 1998. Radiators look brand new. And hoses look brand new. Seat's a little rough. Could use a new seat cover. And rear brake is a little bit locked up. But you can see the new gaskets here, so it was rebuilt at one point. <laughs> and the guy gave me the old pistons. Pretty sure he rebuilt it. V-Force reads in there. Doesn't leak any oil. Had this thing sitting about a day. And no oil was leaking. We'll see if it shifts here in a little bit. But looking over the whole bike, it doesn't look too bad. Got the works connection uh, skid plate on there. And these plates here, the heel plate. The sprockets have seen better days. But not that bad. No coolant leaking from the head. Right now at least. Let's check compression here. So, just turning it over, it feels like it has a lot of compression. For a 125, so we'll have to test that and see. But yeah, overall, not horrible for $1,000. Bike's in the garage. All right, let's start digging into it. I think we're gonna start with the air filter. Get the seat off of here. See what that looks like. Oh, actually, you know what? He gave me the air filter. That's the old air filter on there. He said he was going to replace that, but I uh, never got around to it because it wasn't running. 
So that doesn't look too bad. We'll clean that off and re-oil that for now, for testing purposes. Here's the old piston that came with it. It looks like the piston got hit a couple times. You can see right there and right there. I wonder if like a circlip came out or something. And chomp that. He said the cylinder had no scratches on it, so we'll see. The ring feels pretty good. Doesn't feel that bad. Yeah, piston doesn't look too bad. A little blow by there. Holes were drilled for the bridge. Let's see what size that is. Looks like 30, is that 36 millimeter? Airbox looks pretty clean. Not a bunch of sand in there or anything. And the guy said he never had it running after the rebuild at all. So it's not like it started up and blew up again. It'd be something as simple as a pulled wire or a frayed wire grounding out in the frame or a coil wire not touching. Check this out. Just saw this. So you can see. See that coil wire? That's like loosely on there. See that? That could be our problem right there. So that's barely making contact. So that might be sporadic spark when you're kicking this thing over. So we're gonna fix that right away. But for fun, we're gonna check spark when it's like that and after we fix it, just to see what that looks like. So we'll leave that for now. There's also a ground wire coming in behind the coil. You can see this wire. I believe it's black. So that needs to be cleaned off and uh, making good contact to the frame and the coil in order to have good spark. So maybe it was just really weak spark from the coil. Turning it over, like I said before, feels like really good compression. But we don't know until we get a compression tester in there. But just by feel, I feel like it's over 150. Well, let's uh, check the oil out, see if there's anything in there. He said he put new oil in here, so let's see if that's, that's true. Get a little zip tie dipstick down in here. And yeah, that looks like brand new oil to me. Cool. There's also an oil check bolt right here. So we can take that out and see if there's enough in here. You want to make sure you're on a level surface when you check this bolt. Let's see what's in there. We'll tip it a little bit, just see if anything comes out. So there's not quite enough oil in there. A little bit low so we're probably just going to drain that and add some fresh oil in there that should be pouring out i believe he said there is no cooling in here either let's check that yeah that's empty yeah these look brand new though so that's kind of nice all right get this boot off all right so sometimes the boot can be the fail point as well. This one looks like it's not a screw on type, I don't think. Maybe it is. Yeah. You can see the wire is coming through there. What I like to do is just cut off a little bit of that wire to expose that fresh wire. There we go. And then we'll reattach this boot. Spray a little WD-40 on there. Now oh, it should slide right in there. There we go. Just like that. Twist that back on until it gets tight. 
Perfect. Plug was loose. So he was definitely <laughs> playing with the plug. Trying to figure out what was going on. I'm thinking it's gotta be a spark problem. So he's using an old plug, it looks like, unless he did have this thing running at one point, but I don't think he did. He said he didn't, but that plug is pretty brown, black. So we're gonna put that right there, and we'll check for spark. So he told me that he was playing with the flywheel, thinking it was the ignition timing, and that maybe the woodruff key broke. So he said he had this cover off and the flywheel off and he never torqued it back down. So let's see. We definitely don't want to kick it over without that flywheel torqued down. We'll take a look at the flywheel too. Make sure that's still magnetized and that the Woodruff key is still in one piece. I've seen these Woodruff keys shear right in half, cause spark at the wrong time. And he said this thing won't even puff out any smoke, won't even try to fire. So either it's not getting any spark or any fuel. Yeah, as you can see, that nut is not torqued on at all. We'll check the Mark up here, you can see there's a line on the stator that should line up with the line or the arrow on the case here. And it lines up perfectly. See that arrow lines up with this line right here. So that looks good, he had that correctly installed. It's a 14 millimeter. Work that around. Now pull out, see if this was loose, yep. You wanna check and see if this is magnetized. Yep, good magnetism. All the way around the flywheel. There's some dirt in there. There's some sand. Clean that out. A lot of sand. It's a little concerning. Yeah, we'll clean that out. Woodruff key is still in there. Right there. So we'll kick this thing over until it's at the top. There we go. And we'll inspect that. That looks really good. All right, here's the pickup coil. We're just gonna clean that off too. Kind of wipe everything down. All these contacts are a little dirty. You can see there's a lot of gunk in there. Sometimes that can be a sign of a bad crank seal too on this side. And if it's a bad crank seal on this side, it would be allowing a ton of air into the crankcase here. And it would be running super lean. So what would happen is you start up the bike, it would just rev to the moon because it's sucking in air through the seal here. And the crank seal on the other side is actually the opposite. It'd be sucking in oil. So it'd bog down a lot and have like zero power. So that's how you can kind of tell which crank seal it is causing problems. And this one you can actually just take right out. It's super easy. So it's not a big deal if it does go. Uh, 
just like that. What I like to do is take a flashlight and make sure that it's lined up with the woodruff key. And that looks good. All right, we'll get that washer back on. And then we'll torque this back down. You don't want to kick it over dry. Just a little oil down there. Lube that up. All right, now we're kicking this thing over. We're listening for knocking sounds uh, for like a bad rod bearing. We're listening for crunching sounds like the piston hitting the cylinder or again a knocking sound where the piston hits the head. Let's just see. Sounds pretty good. No knocking. All right, you guys keep a close eye on the plug. Let's see what we get here. Not seen any spark. What the heck? How is there no spark? That's not good. The guy said there was spark. That's interesting. Well, I think we know why this thing didn't fire up. So that is not great. <laughs> he also said that it ohmed out and the stator was fine. All right, new plug going in. Brand new plug going in. Never used. Let's see what we get. Let's see here. It's nothing. Turn off the light here. All right, it's dark. Let's see if we get anything. Absolutely nothing. So what we're gonna do is try to hook up that orange wire to the coil a little bit better. See if that's causing a problem. All right, this orange wire is the one in question here. You can see it's kind of half on there. We probably wanna check and see uh, that ground as well. This is what we need. Wire a little bit. Get that on there. <laughs> All right. Now we can reconnect it. We'll see if we have any spark here. Looks like that ground wire needs to get out of the way. Before we clean up the ground, I want to see if this fixes our problem first. Now we can get this on. Just like that. Test her out, see what happens. Now the ground wire. So we'll take that all the way off and clean that post off of there. All right. So look for any broken wires here. Doesn't look the greatest. We're just gonna sand that down, see how rusty that is. Clean off the coil post here. Looks pretty 
good. This is pretty rusty. Post, we want to clean that off a little bit. If I can get that in there, you have to use a piece of sandpaper to get way in there. That should be good enough. We'll get that back on. I just want to do a quick continuity test here. While we have this off. You should hear a beep when we hit this connection with the one up here. Yep. And same with the orange one here. Let me plug it in. We'll plug it in. A wire up here, through here, and then down here. So that plug is fine. That plug-in is fine. Now we'll do a continuity test between the the coil post and ground. So one, two here, and one, two the engine. Let's see if we're getting good ground. Right here. Yep. Let's check for spark again. Nada. What the heck? What the kill switch does is it grounds out one of these wires and sends it to the other wire and then down to the coil. And that grounds out the coil to prevent spark. So, what we can do is just disconnect the two wires going from the kill switch. So the white and the black and the black. Let those dangle. And now, we have an open circuit that can't get grounded out because those are disconnected. So, that completely bypasses the kill switch by disconnecting them. Let's see if we have spark now. <laughs> Come on. Now we're not getting anyone. Nothing's lighting up. What we can do is completely bypass the boot and put the coil wire directly to the engine and try to ground that out. Because maybe it's just a bad boot. So we're gonna cut off a little bit more of that wire. Expose that. And angle here. Now we've got a bunch of wire exposed. See that? And we're gonna ground that directly to here. And we should see a spark. Head. I don't think I'm seeing anything. And if you really feel comfortable, just hold that. Yeah, I'm not getting sparked at all. Not a single spark. So now we know it's not the boot. We know it's not the ground going to the coil. We know it's not the orange wire going to the coil. We know it's not the spark plug. So right now, I'm thinking it's either the stator, the actual coil, or the CDI. The CDI is what we don't want that to be. But uh, we can definitely check this plug-in, make sure there's nothing pulled out here 
I kind of go over that whole thing too. All right, so this is the plug-in for the stator that's coming directly from the stator up to the wiring harness on the bike. Oh, that really wasn't even connected too much. Hmm. Nothing's pulled out, nothing's broken here. So you can see that looks good. Sometimes these pins in here can pull out and won't make a good connection. Same with these, all those pins look good. Nothing's getting pulled out. Let's reconnect this. There. That made a good connection. <laughs> seen anything. Alright, we'll check the connection between the plug and the CDI here. <laughs> oh man. And those all appear to be good. Nothing's pulled out. CDI prongs. Look in there. So that should be making a good connection there. Typically if these go bad, there'll be like a crack in the box here. It's sandy for sure. I don't see any cracks. Sometimes too you can hear like a little clicking sound in there when you shake it. Like something rattled loose. I don't hear that at all either. So CDI physically looks fine. I'll plug that back in. Everything looks like it's making a good connection there. All right, next we're gonna measure the stator. I unplugged it from the wiring harness. And on this stator, you're gonna have a blue, white, black, red, a green blue, a straight black, a green white, and a red white. So the pickup coil is going to be the blue white and the red white. So that's right here on the stator. We want to make sure that's good. So we're going to measure the pickup coil first. So according to our manual, it should be between 248 and 372 ohms. Blue white, right here. And the red white right there. And you can see 294 ohms. So that's between 248 and 372. So that looks good. And I'm not touching the ends of the testers here. So a pickup coil appears to be good. Um, next test we can do is the source coil. So the source coil is going to be 720 to 1080 ohms and the source coil is between the red and the black right there and the green and the white right here so red and black green and white right here so it's just up and down so let's test that green and white red and black And we're not getting a reading at all. So that's the source coil one. Yeah, absolutely zero reading. Wow. So what we're gonna do is take our meter, just see if it's a really low reading here. And we're still not getting a reading. Still nothing. So that might be the problem right there. That's source coil number one. So the red and black and green and white. Source coil number two should be between 44 and 66 ohms. And that's gonna be the green and blue over here. And I believe the black, so the two end ones here. Let's see what we get. Hold those tight to there. Get that on there. 
There we go. We're at 57.1, and that falls between 44 and 66 ohms between the blue and green and black. So source coil number two appears to be fine. So it looks like source coil number one might be the culprit here. It's on there. seal too. We were right about that seal. <laughs> that crank seal is really pushed in. Look at that. So no wonder it blew up the first time. That's just letting a ton of air in. <laughs> Alright, we've got the shader off over here. So we're going to test this on the bench here. Source coil should have between 720 and 1080 ohms. And that's between the black and the red and the green and white wire. So let's just measure this off the bike here. And I'll put the multimeter right here so you guys can see. And we're doing red and black here and green and white is right below it. Not a single thing showing up in any of the settings here. So nothing. So if we follow the red and black and green and white, none of the coils smell like they burnt up or anything. Usually that gives off a pretty foul smell and you'll be able to see like burn marks on the stator here on the wires. I don't see any of that. The wire for the black and red one is right there and the green and white one is right here. So I drilled into the coating here, just so I can expose those wires. We're going to test continuity between the wire up here and down here to make sure it's not a break in the wire harness here. So we've got our continuity tester on, we're going to do black red, and then we're going to do black red too down here, and it should beep, if it doesn't beep, there's a break in the wiring harness. So. That's working. I was hoping for a break there. <laughs> now uh, the green and white one on the harness to the green and white wire down here. It should beep. Please don't beep. <laughs> and that beeps. We're getting continuity from this wire up here to down here on both of the black and red and the green and white. So. We're going to test resistance from those two points. So right here and right here. And again, nothing. 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 We have the highest setting we have. Not a single thing coming up. So let's see here. Nothing. So something's going on with the stator. Not sure what it is, not sure why it failed, but something's not working between those two wires and that coil. So it looks like these two coils are the bad ones. 
All right, so I ended up taking apart where the green and white wire goes into in the stator. And just to see if that solder joint broke on that plate. And to test that, just use a continuity tester and if you hear a beep on the plate, that means it's good. Put it to the beep setting here. That one's good. It did the same thing with the black and red. So it went underneath this plate here. So the solder joint there is fine. All right, so I exposed the coil wires here, and none of them are black or burnt out. You can see on the bottom here too. They look really good. Same with this one. See that? So nothing got burnt out. I'm not sure what the heck happened here. I guess we'll never know. All right, so we know that the stator was the problem. That was bad but we don't know if the CDI is bad too. The only way to test the CDI is if the stator is good. So once we get the new stator for it, that's gonna be good. If it still doesn't have spark, we know it's a CDI for sure. But uh, let's get this seal out of here and see what that looks like. Pop through. bigger. There we go. Yeah, you can see that spring was off because that seal is broken. But let's move on. Let's see if this bike actually has compression. He said he rebuilt the top end, so compression should be above 150 with a fresh top end here. Let's see what we get. I'm hoping for above 150 here. Throttle open. Let's see what we get. Here we go. Oh, that feels really weird. Oh, just locked up. <laughs> you serious right now? What the heck? This thing just locked up. What in the world? All right, well that's not good. We were at 70 pounds of compression before it locked up, so I'm not sure what the heck happened there. Locked up tight. That is really, really weird. Look at that. All right, this whole thing's coming apart. <laughs> what the heck? It was smooth for a little bit. Nah, it's locked up. What in the world? This is gonna turn into a money pit. Oh boy. It was turning over just fine. Oh, that feels a little wobbly too. Oh man, oh man. Oh, it freed itself up, there we go. Oh, it's that rod bearing toast. Or tearing it down. Well, I was not expecting this bike to lock up here like that. Let's see if it kicks over again. Nope, it's still locked up. So what we're gonna do is uh, get the lines off first here. There's a line there in the head. There, that was loose.
What do you guys think happened here? That feels like rod bearing to me. See a couple little dings that match that uh, that piston ding. So something let loose and hit uh, the piston in the head from the old the old piston there. Piston looks good. No damage to the top of the piston. All right, let's get the power valve rod on. It's working. Oh man, that's on there too. There we go. It's like lock tight it on. Yeah, it looks like it maybe was. Here we go. Moment of truth. The heck caused this thing to lock up. Cylinder looks amazing. I don't think it was a cylinder. That looks really good. I don't think it was a piston either. Piston just looks like a cheapy piston on there. But it's locked up pretty good and I'm trying to kick it over. I think it's rod bearing. Work out. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tight. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. That's so tight on there. <laughs> well, let's get the piston off. Tight 
Top end bearing feels fine. Piston looks brand new, but we'll still check the ring gap on that. Locked up tight rod bearing. What is all this stuff in here? Yeah, that got hot. You can see that plastic's melted in there. Full focus. Oh boy. Locked up tight. Yeah, all that plastic's melted. So something got really hot. It's all melted. Yeah, all that plastic's melted. So kicking it over, the couple times I kicked it over did not make that hot. <laughs> this was bad before I got it. And that rod is on there tight. So unfortunately, that's junk. <laughs> All right, carb wasn't really even on. That off. That wasn't even connected either. What else we find wrong with this bike? So far there's a lot. <laughs> Alright, before we complete we take this off. Let's see if it shifts. <laughs> Even check that yet? There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Alright, so there's neutral. So it does shift. Teeth are completely almost gone, and the other ones are just horrible. Looks like a wave. Look at that. Wow, that's bad. Swing arm nut coming off, hopefully. It's stuck too. I think we can get the engine out now. Go through this way. All right, she's out. 15 minutes to get the engine out, so not too bad. But we'll see what other goodies we find inside. Oh yeah. All right, I'm curious to see what the water pump looks like. on there, holy man. Look at that. Yeah, 
this is not looking good. <laughs> So that didn't have a gasket, I'm sure that leaked. Let's see if that spins with the crank, yeah it does. Washer underneath there. Hard to tell what that seal looks like. All right, drain plug is right here. Probably should have drained this before. Whatever. Been off in a while. The governor. All right. Doesn't look too bad in there. Water pump. That looks pretty good. Bearings are all good in there. So far it's looking pretty decent. Let's see what we got. Looks like a new clutch basket. washer for the clutch isn't pulled back at all. Came loose. See? It's not folded down at all. That should be folded over the nut right there. That was not. Whole clutch can come off. Alright, that looks pretty good. This looks like a uh, Hinson clutch basket, so that's kind of nice. All right, bearing, bushing, look good. Transmission smooth in there. Wash your off. Crank gear looks good. We'll check out the uh, seal there once we get this gear off. That gear's got a little chip out of it. You see right there. Alright, so the crank seal doesn't look too bad. Not horrible. This is coming off. Kickstart mechanism. Looks good.
All right, I believe all those bolts are off. All right, here we go. Oh, those bearings are toast too. Holy cow. Yeah, crank bearings are toast. That bearing feels good. That one feels good. No metal chunks or anything. This crank will come out. <laughs> so look at that rod bearing in there. You can see them all at that angle like that. Here's all the plastic that melted on the crank. See that? So it got really hot. Now put all that plastic around the crank. Yeah, it's really bad. That rod bearing in there is horrible. You can see some of them are fused together. Not good. We'll check out the gears in here. Let's kind of spin that around. No teeth are off. But I can see and I shifted through all the gears just fine. So we'll inspect that and take that out, but oh. crank bearings toast. Crank bearings are junk. And the seals were junk pretty much. So yeah, this one's uh this one's turning into a big money pit. I thought we were getting a good deal. Unfortunately, we did not. All right, taking a look at the cylinder. Cylinder doesn't have any scratches, so we lucked out there. The power valves, however, look like they're stuck. At least one of them. Let's see. You can see one going up and down, the other one's not. So we'll have to tear that apart and fix that. I want to quick check the ring gap here and see if this was a new piston. Let's see what that ring gap is at. Yep, that looks pretty good. About 14 thousandths probably. So, definitely a new piston. Looks like a cheap Namira piston or whatever it's called. Typically don't like using those. So we'll probably get the like go or a Pro X. At least the cylinder looks good, the head looks pretty good. So really it's the crank, the crank bearings, the stator, and I think that's pretty much it. So not horrible. But not the best. <laughs> um, I was expecting something easy, you know, since he said the, the bottom end was fine and the top end was fine. And maybe he just didn't catch the crank, you know. I guess it's probably pretty easy to miss if you don't see it all the time. But it uh, looks like he rebuilt the top end with a bad rod bearing. Yeah, that was really unlucky. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, it could have been worse, so we'll get all the parts for it, rebuild it, and we'll see if that new stator fixes our spark problem. I'm hoping it does. I'm, I'm hoping it's not the CDI. The CDIs for these get to be pretty expensive, so we'll see you next video. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video, and until next time.